Hi, MC Bleeding Daddy here, and welcome back to another segment in using command box for coding, as one might with a language such as Java or C Sharp. Excuse me a second while I get rid of the weather. Okay, that should uh, last us for a while. And let me remind you of what our objectives are. Our objective, ultimately, is to create a railway that will allow this minecart to move off into the distance in plus X and plus Z. And uh, currently, we have initialized our um, data if you will, our variable, which is the minecart itself. And uh, we have placed it at the beginning of the railway. And our first objective, taking a simple step, is to move the railway one forward in the Z direction. So that would be here. And I'll get rid of these blocks so that you can see, first of all, we have to place dirt underneath the rails that we will place and we will place them in Z plus one from where the minecart is located and we are using relative reference so that wherever the minecart is we will take one step in the positive Z direction and we have then also in the X direction we have to place a minecart from excuse me we have to place a minecart rail from a minus one, no, we have to place the dirt underneath. From x minus one from the minecart to x plus one from the minecart. Looks like Minecraft has started to fill us in already. Um, and then once we have filled in dirt at z plus one, but x minus one to x plus one, we'll fill in a rail, or actually set a rail, uh, at Z plus one from the minecart, and then we will move the minecart forward. So let's start off and take a look at what we have in the way of blocks. Uh, since I introduced you to placing and coding command blocks last time, I have gone ahead and set the blocks that we need for this segment, and I will then take a look at the coding within the box and uh, simply introduce you to the new code. So here's a new block that is behind our initialization box that would be executed next if we were to execute from the very beginning. But uh, what it does is to place a powered repeater and in this case two in the negative x direction and seven in the plus z direction from the command block, and let's take a look where that is. And that is right here. So a powered repeater will be replaced, will be placed here, and then will cause the execution of this series of blocks. Now, one more thing that I need to do with this block, and hopefully the only time that I will need to go into survival mode, because that's the only way that you can place a button, I will be placing a button so that we can execute this single block. And so game mode, survival mode is zero. And then we'll be placing a button here. And then we will go back into creative mode so that we can look at our coding. So when we press this button, it will place a powered repeater uh, up here and start executing these blocks. The, well, let me get around on the other side here so we can take a look at our mine cart while we're looking at the code. Our first task is to get rid of the powered repeater. Otherwise, the blocks would remain powered forever. It doesn't shut off by itself. So the first thing we do is from this command block, one in the Z direction, 
relatively speaking, we are going to place an air block and that will destroy the powered repeater that's there. Nonetheless, the block will have caused this repeater to execute the code of the second block. And this is probably the most complicated uh, of the code that we've looked at so far. But basically what it says is that we are going to execute a command. And that command is going to be based on an entity. And in fact, that entity will be our minecart called minecart writable. Uh, is its Minecraft identity. So what this says is that wherever that minecart is, we take its coordinates, x is the same coordinate, y is the same coordinate, but z will be plus 1, in other words, off in the plus z direction, we will go 1, and all the commands that we execute based on this specification will be executed as if they were being executed from this location. And we took a look at the minecart and where we wanted to put in the next uh, set of blocks. So what we're going to do is now we're going to fill the um, blocks in front of the minecart, again based on this relative location, <clears throat> and we are going to use the Z in both cases here for the fill command that is one in front of the minecart. The Z here basically tilde says use the same location as where we're executing from, and that's one in front of the minecart. Now the dirt will be placed minus 1 in the y direction, in other words underneath where the minecart will be going. So here is the y here is minus 1 and the y here is minus 1. And the x direction, as we noted earlier, will be from 1 to the right of the minecart to 1 to the left of the minecart. But again, in front of the minecart. And what the fill does is says take this block which is basically one below and one to the right of the minecart, but in front of it, and go to this location, which is one below the minecart again, but now one to the left of the minecart. So take all those blocks from the right to the left and fill them in with dirt. A complex um, command. Uh, we may see more complex in the future, but at least we'll get us a start because basically this says put some dirt blocks in front of the minecart in the Z direction. Okay, so we've put some dirt down. Our next block says the same thing as far as where we're starting from. We're starting from basically a location that's one positive Z in front of the minecart and we are now going to set a rail down at that location that's what the tildes say is that at that location no change one in front of the minecart we're going to put down a rail block and finally we are well, I have to move down here a little bit we will transport the minecart this selects the minecart itself and we will move it same X location, same Y location, but one in the Z direction, plus one in the Z direction. So let's take a look and see what happens then. First of all, I'm going to come back here so we can see a little bit of what's going on. We won't be able to see the minecart necessarily. Well, yes, I guess we can. We'll take this, uh, we'll uh, click on this block with a right mouse click. And we see some uh, things happening. Unfortunately, from this location, we can't really see the repeater that was placed here, and it was removed by filling in with air. But we now see that we have, in fact, filled in those three dirt blocks, 
and we have put down a rail both one in the Z direction plus Z direction in front of where the minecart was originally and we have moved the minecart and notice that we did this all with relative locations relative to the minecart and so our next step will be to <coughs> excuse me to move the minecart one more based on the relative location of where the minecart now is so let's go do that let's see if we can uh, execute this in such a way that we can see a powered repeater being placed down. I need to move a little bit more this way. Let's see if we can see that. Well, nope, but you did see the repeater being powered here. I guess we'll just have to take it on faith that a powered repeater is being put there in front of that first block. Let's check it out again. Mm, where's a good point to see it from? I wonder if from up here we can see it. Uh, not quite. Ah, well, okay. Well, we will execute this once again. And you see the repeaters here being activated. And notice, of course, that since this repeater points towards this block, that the activation does not go backwards. And that's one of the reasons that we use uh, repeaters. Okay, so we have now moved our minecart a few paces up. And as you'll notice, the dirt blocks are just simply extending out into space. There is nothing underneath them. And so they will continue to extend out on, on into space. But what we really would like to do is to have this set of blocks execute again and again without having to push the button each time. So what we'll do is we will make one more modification here and we'll put down a block <clears throat> simply to allow us to turn the corner and so let's see a repeater here and let's put a series of repeaters another block and another repeater and now what should happen is that we get a feedback loop where the repeaters get activated and activated and activated until they come back around and reactivate the initial block that we started with in this loop. This is what in some programming languages might be called a while loop because no just a loop and it will execute continuously as you can see the repeaters just continue to be lit and the only way to stop this this is what would be called an infinite loop is to actually break the repeater loop somewhere here and we will do that right there and that will stop our execution so we now have initialized our railway and we have set up a loop to move it off into space but it continues uncontrolled until well something happens and what that something is usually is that the minecart will get to the end of a block um, a uh, uh, some kind of limitation that Minecraft has set up and it will no longer 
um, actually be controlled by our command box. So what we need to do is we need to set up something to control the loop, the infinite loop, so that it ends in some reasonable way. And we will see about doing that in our next segment. So that's about it for now. Thanks for watching.